It's been tough trying to find that 1950 Denver minted key date Jefferson nickel for the Series 2 books. So I figured I'd go ahead and grab a couple of boxes from the Amarillo National Bank to see if it could help us out. Hey everyone, it's Rob Fine Treasure. Welcome back to my channel. We have a two box nickel hunt today in our quest to not only find the 50D for this book, but any side finds book, any buffalo nickels, war nickels, which are made of 35% silver, or other cool finds. Now, like I said in the intro, I've got a couple of Amarillo National Bank boxes sitting in front of me. Now, of course, I had to go ahead and take a peek inside to make sure that we had circulated nickels, and we do. And I'll also tell you that when I pop the top of this box, we actually have a buffalo nickel ender in it. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but this box would be full of buffalo nickels. So definitely, definitely has piqued my curiosity to see if they're good boxes. They are brother and sister box, and I even have a third box that I'm saving to marry with another nickel box for a future hunt. Now, this is going to be episode number 130 of the series, but it's boxes 123 and 124 of the series two book. As many of you know, we completed the Series 1 album. It took 167 boxes, and that's the mission for this book. Can we find the last nickel we need, the 1950D, before box number 167, or at least by box 167? We're also missing five nickels in the Side Finds book. They're the tougher date ones, so hopefully we can find some of those. And like I've already mentioned, we'll take buffaloes, which we know we got one, any silver nickels, V-nickels, proofs, foreigns, varieties, you name it. Come on, Amarillo National Bank, help us out. Now, obviously, I'll give you guys a look at the books at the end when I compare the finds from today's hunt to them to see if we have any upgrades or additions, and fingers crossed we do. But for now, I need to get right to the hunt. We're going to kick it off with the Buffalo Nickel Ender box, but I've got to get these boxes turned the appropriate way so that I can hunt them. I'm going to start the hunt, and as soon as I have a find in this box, I'll bring you guys back in. Rule number one of the first box, we already have an early Jefferson find. A 1941 Philadelphia. Oh, and that's what the wrappers look like. Just grabbed rule three out of the box, and because of the orientation, it's the Buffalo Nickel Ender. And I'll tell you, I can't tell if it's been nickedated or not, but it looks like it's going to be a 1920 based on what I saw with my loop. Let me go ahead and pull it out of the roll and confirm it with you guys here in a second. That Buffalo Nickel Ender does look like it's been nickedated, and it does look like it's going to be a 1920 with the Ring of Death. And it does appear to be a Philadelphia minted Buffalo Nickel. Let's just double check it. Yeah, 1920 and nickedated. So most likely someone's discard, common date with damage, but I'll take it regardless. Could be a good sign. Roll four, another oldie, a 1939. Jefferson Nickel, does it have a mint mark? And it does not, so it's a common Philadelphia, but we'll just quickly scope it to see if it's the DDR, which I don't see that it is. Definitely a Philadelphia minted one for sure. Still an early find, another early find for the board. Roll number nine, we've got a 1946 Jefferson Nickel from Denver. Well, we're on roll number 11, and we're going to have another Buffalo Nickel, because hunting this roll and sliding them down, I see a Denver Minted Buffalo Nickel towards the back of the roll. This is going to be our second Buffalo Nickel already in 11 rolls. Definitely has a mint mark. Looks like it's Denver. And it's going to be a 1937. Let me just make sure that is a Denver mint mark. It should be. And it is. 37D. All the legs are there. Two buffalo nickels so far in the box. Roll number 20 actually had an ender, and I saw that it might have been in the 50s. It does have the ring of death. It's a 1955, but when I flipped it around, no mint mark. 1955 Philadelphia is a lower mintage, and it's actually considered a semi-key date nickel. And we'll definitely take that one for the board. A lot of nickel finds so far. A lot of rolls left. Well, we just grabbed roll 25 out of the box and we laid it out and we're going to have our third Buffalo nickel because peeking out, I see the top of the Buffalo. Unbelievable. Three Buffalo nickels in the first 25 rolls of the box. And this one's going to be a San Francisco Vincent Buffalo nickel. I don't see those very often in my area. 
We have a Philadelphia, a Denver, and now a San Francisco. What year is it? And I think that's a 1931. It is. 1931 dated Buffalo nickel. San Francisco minted. That's actually a semi-key date Buffalo nickel. If I recall, there's less than a million and a half of these minted. And I will take it. This is probably in VF. At least fine. Maybe VF condition. 1931S. That's probably a $15 nickel. Three Buffalo nickels in the first 25 rolls of the box. Will there be more? Roll number 29. It's not a Buffalo, but it is a 1947 Jefferson nickel from San Francisco. That's actually a lower vintage as well, but not a semi-key or a key date. Well, we're on roll number 40, and I was getting ready to film what I found, and I flattened out the roll, and there's going to be two finds because we have yet another Buffalo nickel, the fifth coin up. What I was going to film was the 1947 Denver nickel, and now since I have you here, we've got another Buffalo, and this one's dated as well. 1926, Philadelphia. Man, if it would have had an S, would have been another nice find, but I'll still take it. That is a Buffalo Stampede going on. Ten rolls left. Oh, I almost forgot. I also found a few rolls ago a beautiful 1958 better date Philadelphia nickel with a lower mintage. And then I still pull them out every once in a while. A lower minted 2009 Denver Jefferson nickel. Let's get back to the hunt. Roll number 43 is going to give us a fun find. It's a foreign coin. And take a look at this. It's a Norwegian coin or Norway coin. 2010, one crone. Can't get mad at that. Cool design with a hole in it. And it looks like it has some fives on there. We'll take that, add it to the side finds. And I forgot to mention it. We also had a pretty ugly penny in one of the rolls. Roll number 46. Buffalo nickel. Number five. And that's going to be, I believe, a 1936. Let's just double check the mint mark here. And I thought so. San Francisco. 1936. San Francisco. Five dated Buffalo nickels in the box. Of course, one was nickadated. Unbelievable. Roll number 49, and I think I have a new record for Buffalo Nickels. I'll have to check my record logs, but we have Buffalo Nickel number six right here. It's also nickadated, and I don't think we're going to get anything off of this at all. Uh, it looks like, you know, I don't know. Could be a teen's. And it could have a mint mark, could just be damaged. It's been nickadated before, and now the date's not revealed, so I don't think nickadating it's going to help, although I might give it a shot at the end of the video. We'll have to see. Either way, that's six Buffalo Nickels. If I figure out the date and mint on this before the end of the video, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we'll just put it in my dateless Buffalo Nickel jar and get back to the hunt. Well, curiosity got the better of me, so I went ahead and applied Nicodate again, and now I can see the date. It's a 1920 and no mint mark. It's our second nickel from 1920. Both of them were Nicodated. This one, now twice. Roll 50 is going to give us a parting gift, and I saw it by the edge, and I flattened them out, and I still think it looks good. We have our first Silver War nickel of the box. It's a Philadelphia, probably a 43. No. First year transition Silver War nickel, 1942 Philadelphia. We'll take that. Six Buffaloes, a Silver nickel, and a 39 with some semi-keys and better dates on the board. Let me finish this roll and come back. We have finished that first Amarillo National Bank box and uh, definitely, definitely a good box. There's north of 25 finds on the board. We have a Canadian a Norway coin, an 09D, six Buffalo nickels, all of which are dated now, a war nickel, a 39P, a couple of nicer 
more modern Jefferson Nichols to check against that collection, and then a whole bunch of 40s and 50s, and actually not that many 40s, to be honest, but a lot of 50s. Still no 50D. First box was a lot of fun. Let's do the second box together. Let me go ahead and close this up, get the discards in it, and I'll slide this over to give you a look at the top before I crack any rolls. All right, box two of the hunt, and I'll tell you, I don't know if this is gonna be the better of the next two boxes. I have a third box, like I said, but I just grabbed this one to go marry with the other one. So, could be a great box like the last one. Maybe it won't be. Doesn't look that great from the top coins, but neither did the last box other than the Buffalo Ender. Let's continue with the hunt. We'll start hunting this box, and as soon as I have a find, I'll be back. Well, we're on roll 26 of the second box, and it's definitely been a light box. I think this is the first find I'm going to share with you guys. We have added a Canadian and some in the 50s, but the first 40s, Jefferson, is a 1947 Philadelphia all the way in roll number 26. Well, I'm on roll number 27 of this second box, and it has been cold until now. Under the scope, I have a nickel that I have looked for for over five years. And before I show it to you, I brought a regular nickel out. I had to go back through the discard bin to find one, and I want to talk about it. Under the scope is a regular 1975 Denver minted circulated Jefferson nickel. Now, before 1989, these mint marks were hand-punched on the die. So you'll see these Denver mints and any other mint mark on most coins before 1989 all over the board. They could be here, they could be here, they could be here, they could be down low. But in 1975, there were some examples of this Denver mint mark being punched between the five and this little uh, ribbon piece in where his ponytail is on Jefferson. And it was known as the 1975 Denver High D Nickel. Now, it even has an FS number 401, and PCGS has not graded these yet or doesn't recognize it, but NGC does. And only five examples have been graded by NGC, and some have sold for some big money. I have looked for that high D nickel forever. In this nickel box, when I slide this nickel over and bring it up, it's not in the best shape, but that is, at least what it looks like to me, the exact placement of the Denver Mint Mark in the high D position next to the ribbon and next to the five. And again, if I bring the other one side by side with it again, you can see where it's supposed to be. And this one is right here. I'm gonna bring up a couple of pictures online of other 75 high D Denver minted Jefferson Nichols, and you let me know. Here's an example graded XF 45 and you can see where the Denver mint mark is compared to the ribbon and the five. When you look at it next to mine, looks like it's pretty much in the exact same spot to me. Just about touching the ribbon, below the five, just about touching the ribbon, below the five. Now I'm zoomed in a lot more on mine than that example, but that looks like it's it to me. And uh, based on the condition of this Jefferson nickel, it's probably in a high VF, maybe a low XF. I mean, I could be off a little bit. It's hard to tell, and it's got some discoloration. But it's in decent shape for a circulated example, and I'm fairly certain that that is the high D. Obviously, like I said, PCGS doesn't grade these. Only NGC does. And typically, if I would want to get any value for it, I would need it to be a certified example. But for now, I'm just going to flip it up, FS401, and... Uh, be thankful that I found one. Five and a half years of looking for it. Looks like we got one. Just wanted to share that find with you guys. And now let's get back to the hunt. Roll number 32. We've got another 1947 Jefferson nickel from Denver. Same roll, just a few coins later. A 1938 first year Jefferson nickel. Does it have a mint mark? And it doesn't. Still a better date, lower mintage, but key date would have had a D or an S. We'll take it though. 1938 Jefferson Nickel for the board and 75D high D for the collection. Roll number 43. We've got our first nickel of the entire hunt from 1940. And it's a Philadelphia minted one. Roll number 46 is going to give us our first Jefferson Nickel 
from 1949. 1949? And I think that's a San Francisco. And it is. 1949 is actually a semi-key date Jefferson nickel as well. And we recently found one in the last nickel hunt along with a 48S. Don't find them too often with their mintage, but I'll definitely take that one and add it to the board. Well, we finished that second nickel box and we have a total of 45 finds on the board, which means we only had 15 finds in the second box. And even though it was definitely a lighter box, no silver, no buffalo nickels, definitely had some good finds and we'll cover those in just a second. I'm not going to cover all of the 40s and 50s finds with you. And we already saw the beat up scent and the 09 Denver minted, lower minted nickel. But as far as the best finds, we had some really nice Jefferson nickels. They're Denver minted, most of them, 60D, 61D, 63D, that's a 66, and a really nice 74D. A couple of scratches, but I'll check it against the album anyway. We also had three foreign coins, a couple of Canadians, and that Norway coin. As far as older Jeffersons, we had a 38 and a 39, both Philly. Two semi-key dates, a 55P and a 49S. Two lower minted Jefferson nickels, a 47S and a 58P. We had the one war nickel, 42P. Six buffalo nickels, two 1920s that have been nickedated, a 26 Philadelphia, a 31S semi key date buffalo nickel, a 36S and a 37D. And then, of course, the find of the hunt is the 1975D FS401 High D. Again, it's not in the best shape. I would say it's probably in that XF range, but either way, that's a good find. I've looked for it forever. I'll have to think about whether I want to submit it to NGC or ANAX or even at all, but for now, it's going in my collection. Speaking of collection, I don't think despite all of these finds, we have any upgrades or additions to both books but maybe a, an upgrade or two, I'll take a peek. And I've got to look at that 31S against my personal Buffalo Nickel collection to see if it upgrades. Let me go ahead and do this now. And I'll be back with a look at the Jefferson books and some final thoughts on this hunt in just a moment. Well, we've compared the finds to both books. Series 2, yet again, because it's already in pretty good shape, did not have any upgrades or additions. Still missing the 50D. For the Series 3 book, we did have a couple of upgrades, though. We were able to upgrade the 47S that we found today, as well as the 1958 Philly. So a couple of nickels in here with lower mintages that we were able to uh, replace and make the book look a little better, although it still needs a lot of work, and we still have five slots open. So now after 124 boxes searched, Series 2 is still missing the 50D, and after 59 boxes searched, Series 3 is still missing five nickels. That being said, we got some silver for the silver jar. We got a bucket lister high D 1975D nickel and a 31S better date Buffalo nickel. Unfortunately, it doesn't upgrade the one I had in my collection. So we'll just offer it to someone else on a future stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this two box hunt. I know I did. I did not expect to have that Buffalo nickel barrage in box one. And I certainly wasn't expecting to have some great finds even though there wasn't a lot of finds in box number two. On top of that, I still have a third Amarillo National Bank box of nickels to hunt. If you did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching. Another silver coin for the silver jar.